Hey guys, welcome back to the special Halloween episode of Chemistry. In this lesson, we're going to be learning about one of our favorite people, Dmitry Mendeleev, and his totally awesome table that we're going to be using from now on. The Periodic Table of the Elements. Dmitry Mendeleev was a Russian chemistry teacher who dedicated much of his time to figuring out patterns in the periodic table. He struggled and struggled with finding patterns in the elements by writing all of the known elements in his time on index cards and arranging them and rearranging them around on his desk. But how did Mendeleev organize his table? Well, he used two methods. Number one, he looked for physical properties. And number two, he looked for chemical properties. Physical properties are properties of an element or substance that don't cause a change in the composition or doesn't cause a change in the way it looks. For example, appearances, such as what color it is, the smell, or even the phase of matter, whether it's a solid or a liquid or a gas, are all physical properties of a substance. They don't change its composition in any way, shape, or form. The other one, chemical properties, do change the composition, and they change it chemically. So properties of an element or substance that are observed when the element reacts or changes its composition. So that's a key word there, reacts. For example, if something reacts with water, that's a chemical property. If it burns in oxygen, which is another type of reaction, that's a chemical property. If it changes its color when it's introduced to something else like copper, that is a chemical property. So if it changes its composition, it's a chemical property. If it doesn't change its composition, it's a physical property. Mendeleev first looked at the physical mass of the atoms by weighing each atom based on the lightest one, hydrogen. He created a long line of elements from smallest to largest. Next, Mendeleev looked at the chemical properties of the atoms to organize them by families of elements that reacted similarly. By doing this, he eventually came up with a table that looks like this one. This is an awesome, awesome table because if you look at it, Mendeleev made bold predictions of elements that didn't exist in his time, but he knew that they did based on his gaps that he left and his properties and the way he organized his table based on physical and chemical properties. In fact, later on, we did discover that more of these elements existed and they fit perfectly in Mendeleev's table. And we're still going today. Of course you guys already know how to use this table, but the beauty in it is, is if you understand it completely, not only will it tell you things like atomic mass and atomic number, but it will tell you more than that. The beauty of it is, is if you know how to use this thing, it'll help you cheat on tests that much better. So before we get started on the cheating trends, we need to talk about a couple of table conventions and get those out of the way beforehand. You need to start getting used to using proper periodic terms when describing things on the table. For example, when we're talking about all of the elements going from the top to the bottom are the elements in each column. We talk, we actually call columns groups. When we go from left to right across rows, rows on the periodic table are called periods. So you need to get used to calling columns groups and rows periods. But there's more to it. The elements here shown in green are called main group elements, while the elements that are kind of down here shoved away a little bit are called transition elements. And then the ones down here in the bottom are called the lanthanide and actinide series. So those are a few names you need to get used to. Okay, now it's time for the trends. To make this easier on you, I'm going to split this off into two parts. The physical trends and then the chemical trends. So make sure you get them all down. There are three physical trends in the periodic table that you should know. Number one, metals, nonmetals, and metalloids. Number two, phases of matter. And number three, atomic radii. So let's look at them each individually. For the first one, the first physical trend, metals, nonmetals, and metalloids, if you look at the periodic table, most atoms are metals. Some are nonmetals, and very few are metalloids. So the ones on the left over here are nonmetals. We have the metalloids that kind of take this little stair step right here that divides the metals from the nonmetals. In fact, that's kind of what they are. We know metals, they're excellent conductors of electricity and heat. They're generally shiny. The nonmetals are poor conductors of heat and electricity. Um, and these are the gases such as the nitrogen and oxygen. 
And then the metalloids are kind of in between. They kind of have properties of both metals and nonmetals. Um, and these are the boron, the silicon. They're semiconductors. And in fact, they're used in lots of semiconductors, like computer chips, because of their excellent properties. The next physical trend is solids, liquids, and gases. Now, if you look here, most things are solid. I mean, if you think about it, most things are metals. Most things are solid. And um, other than that, very few things are liquid and gas. In fact, not a lot of things are liquid at room temperature. This table obviously would change depending on the temperature, but what we're looking at is just the room temperature here. So just realize that most of these things are solid, and then the things kind of in the corner, the upper right-hand corner, are gases. The final physical trend is atomic radii. Now, all a radii is, if you think about a radius of a circle, a radius of the circle just represents kind of the circle's size. The bigger the radii, the bigger the circle. So an atom's radii, atoms' sizes, or the radii, increase going from the upper right-hand corner down to the bottom left. So this is the trend in atomic radii. It increases from upper right to bottom left. Next, next, let's look at a couple of the chemical trends. Number one is reactivity, and number two is ionization energy. These are a little bit tougher, but I think way more cool to look at. The first one, the chemical trend of reactivity, if you look at the periodic table, there's basically kind of two main reactive areas. The lower left-hand corner, these kind of, this far left-hand column are the most reactive metals. And the far right column, not the far right, not for the far right, but the one right before the far right column are the most reactive nonmetals. The very end column here, the elements in group 8A are unreactive. They don't really react at all, so don't include those. But the trend for reactivity is just kind of the corners here in the main group elements. The second chemical trend I want you to know is ionization energy. Don't be afraid by this term. Ionization is just the tendency for atoms to want more electrons. So if you think about these, or the, the tendency for the atoms to want to, to keep um, or to remove their electrons. So the ones in the bottom left-hand corner want to remove their electrons more, and the ones in the upper right-hand corner want to keep their electrons more. So fluorine is a huge electron hog. It wants to keep the electrons, and in fact, it'll steal electrons from other people. Where francium at the bottom left-hand corner down here will actually give away its electrons. It doesn't really care to keep its electrons too much. So that's what ionization energy is. It's just the tendency for the atoms to want to become ions. I know that's a lot of stuff, but I think you guys can handle it. Before we leave, I need to teach you one more thing. Each group in the periodic table represents a different family name, and each family has the same chemical properties. So make sure you know these four families. So the four element families are these. For group 1A, they're the alkali metals. For group 2A, they're the alkaline earth metals. For group 7A, they're the halogens, and group 8A, they're the noble gases. And again, these are named and created based on similar properties. All of the different columns have the same or similar properties. Alkaline metals, these are the metals that are very reactive, especially in water. Alkaline earth metal, metals are found mostly in the, you know, the top crust of our, um, of our earth, and they're reactive, just not as much as alkaline metals. Halogens, you've probably heard of these in our light bulbs. They're also very reactive. Um, and then the noble gases, they're unreactive. They're kind of noble in, in the sense that they don't, they don't really react like the other ones do. They're kind of stable in that sense. So let's end with a review. Number one, you need to know who created the periodic table. Number two, you need to give examples of both chemical and physical properties. Number three, you need to use proper periodic table conventions and terms. And finally, number four, describe the different physical trends and chemical trends of the periodic table. Thanks for staying with me, guys. See you next time.